Log Talk Radio. Everybody's crazy but me. Everybody's nutty as can be. Hello, this is the brand new girl George and the Dragons radio show. Welcome, everybody. This is Girl George, and we have my old friend, uh, the Gypsy Poet. Hi, Gypsy. What you doing? Oh, I'm here. I'm just enjoying the beginnings of the new year and the new program that you started, and I just can't wait to see what what comes of it. It's going to blossom, and it's going to grow, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I guess we should call it Girl George and the Dragons like everything else I do, because it's, it's whoever I can drag on stage. So today we have one of my favorite musicians in the whole world. He's one of the best musicians I've ever met in my my whole life. He used to play with me at the Stork Club, and he plays every instrument there ever was. I think he's been playing since he was two or three years old, and uh, he's the only one-man band I know. He's played all over the world. And how are you doing, Ricky Lee? Ricky Lee Robinson. Here he is. Hello. Uh, I'm doing How just are you fine. Doing? Where have um, you been playing lately? So, well, I I took a, a a long break, and you know just did a couple of those shows at the Missouri Lounge uh, in the last few months. But I basically stepped away from uh, playing regularly for a while, probably since about 2011. Mm-hmm. And I was working on a record and working on. Uh, getting the rest of my life together outside of music. <laughs> and I kind so of how long have you been playing, Ricky? How long have you been playing? Uh, you mean totally or... Like anything, anything. Did when did you start playing? How old were you? I started playing when I was five. That's why I thought, what did you play? Uh, uh, I was a, a organist and a piano player. Uh, and then I was also a cellist, uh, probably between the time I was seven and twelve, and I used to play in orchestras. Uh, and around when I was uh, sixteen, I got a rock band, got my first rock band together. And I started playing guitar when I was seventeen. And uh, so I have a birthday do you coming play? up. How many instruments do you um, play? I don't know. I never really counted it. Uh, you know, there's keyboard type instruments and and guitar type instruments, and I <clears throat> I have a little bit of exposure to you know I'm a cellist, uh, a little bit of exposure to playing brass, but mostly uh, you know keyboards and guitars I can get most of the kinds of sounds that I like from those two, and there's lots of different instruments that have that is the way to play them, so. Um, that's basically what I do these days. I have, I have how many, many how many instruments keyboards. do you play at a time when you're doing the one man band thing? Uh, that's uh, so that's usually a guitar, um, a three piece drum set, and a keyboard and my voice. <laughs> and you've done that at the Great American Music Hall and and where at Times Square right, in right, yeah. New York and where else? Uh, I've been playing uh, the last several years at uh, South by Southwest in Austin. Um, I still like to do it here in town at, at the uh, Embarcadero in San Francisco. And occasionally uh, I will go down to Los Angeles and play there. And I've also played up in Portland and uh, Seattle on this side. So your birthday is coming up. You're Aquarius, right? I'm an Aquarius. Um, so what you going to do on your birthday? I hadn't thought of it, really. I'd probably just not go to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on um, down to the Missouri. I, we'll have a party for you. <laughs> All right. We'll keep that in mind. So what possessed you to get, to get into music? I don't know, you know, I've been doing it since I was so young, and um, 
uh, I always had uh, this a, a natural kind of I could just do it without like I was doing uh, very in, very involved classical music when I was a really young kid in front of large audiences and I never practiced I just seemed to have the ability to do it oh <laughs> that's pretty awesome um, so where are you from originally I'm from New Jersey Ah, and I'm from a little bit of New York here and there. Uh, awesome. So I, I had I had a band in the late '80s and the '90s through around the mid '90s, uh, and we played in New York City for several years during that time until the uh, record industry fell apart. <laughs> but we, you know, we were ta- you know we were ta- we were talking to uh, folks from various labels about getting a job with them, and it, and it, that didn't pan out, and then I came here. I see. Um, and where are you now? Well, now I'm in Oakland, mm-hmm. uh, California, oh, and awesome. uh, I have um, I bought a house here about a decade ago, and I put a recording studio in it. And uh, I'm actually in a, I'm in there now. I'm, I have a bar in my recording studio, so I'm sitting at the bar <laughs> with a hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's really cool. Hmm. So, are you a programmer too, a computer programmer? I am not a programmer. I am a network architect. Okay, whatever. And, that uh, is. Basically, <laughs> I, well, it means that I I design uh, systems that allow computers to talk to each other, and uh, I got involved with that in the nineties after the band fell apart, uh, I had been working part-time in a porno shop and as a taxi driver for many years, and uh, around 1995, yeah, I ended up with no money and homeless, and uh, that was bad, <laughs> that's all I can say. So <laughs> at the time, I decided that I wasn't going to live that way, and um I finagled my way into a job at AT and T before um, the, the internet exploded. And while I was there, I, was, I, I uh, got access to uh, a room that had about a million dollars worth of networking equipment that most people would never be able to get their hands on. And when I had that in front of me, I learned how to do it. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So you created you your own recently, job, right? You created your own job, right? I, uh, I don't know if I created the job, but the thing was at the time, uh, there were very few people that knew how to do that. So, uh, But the demand was very high. So even though I didn't have a lot of experience, somebody was willing to hire me anyway because they needed somebody. <laughs> and you learned how to do it as you did it, right? Yeah, I, well, I... I I seem to be talented at that, and I uh, was I picked it up very easily, and I talk well. So um, when I was being interviewed by prospective employers, I thought that I knew what I was doing, which was, may or may not have been true. But <laughs> <laughs> now you started playing with me back at, at the store club when my hands for, I used to play guitar, and then my hands quit working in about 2000. And uh, yeah. Ricky was playing at my open mic, so I, I, I conned him in to back me up for a while. <laughs> so he, he played guitar yeah. behind me because I couldn't play guitar anymore. And we played at the University of California for the Moore Brothers had an art show there, and they needed me as a, their art project. So he backed me up on that, and we played at the Starry Plow with the Moore Brothers again, you know. And at the store club on the weekend with the Moore Brothers. We used to, you know, open for the Moore Brothers once in a while. So Ricky is a, an amazing guitar player, among other things that he plays, but his guitar is amazing. And the way he plays Space Audi is just awesome. It's 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 better than the original. Right, Ricky? <laughs> I've asked uh, him to do it so many times uh-huh. he hates doing it now. Yeah, I, I, st- I mostly stopped playing that. <clears throat> in fact... <laughs> Um, and, and even if I've I've played it a couple of times since those days, and, and people are like, "Don't play that." 
We heard that one enough. And they don't mind me doing it, but then it creates a reaction where all of a sudden people start playing that song. And, uh, <laughs> no, I love the way you do it. You're just amazing. All by yourself. I mean, he had a whole band and stuff to it. it was, but you all by yourself, it's just, just magic. What yeah, did your mother do? Uh, mother and father do? Way. What kind of work did they do? Uh, my mom... Uh, was a um, speech therapist before she retired. And my dad was one of the original programmers at IBM before he retired. Oh, uh, so he, you have... He, he, you have some purity yeah, in your that, blood. I had, ex- I had that exposure in the 70s. He used to bring that home. So I, uh, I was not... It was not foreign to me. I knew quite a bit about it. Well, that... Uh, that he was one, he was one of the original guys that... Yeah, he he made the original um, code in the '60s for hmm. the, the big IBM machines, and it was all done on punch cards. Yeah, I used to know a guy that worked at the Federal Reserve Bank that was a, a computer programmer back in like 1973. You know, when it was yeah, no well, that was back in the, the good old days. Yeah, now yeah. it's not fun anymore. <laughs> but uh, back then, now it was everybody kind of does it. And, and now uh, you don't even have to have the, all those zeros and whatever because cause it's all words now. You don't have to. Or do you still have to know all that well, stuff for the complicated stuff? Uh, most people don't know that anymore, but it, it all happens in the background. It's still happening. But the codes are still there, behind huh? Behind the words. It's still there, okay. and anybody who's, who's really an expert at it is going to know how to deal with that. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Nope. Nope, you're an only child. Yeah. Uh, Oh, how sweet. (laughs) What do you like? uh, What is the best uh, feedback that you've ever received when it comes down to a performance? I I enjoy the immediate feedback rather than the the Mm post-feedback. So I like... Mm -hmm. um, I particularly like the, the uh, you know I've been doing the one man show for about seven years I think now it's been a while uh, and I enjoy particularly if I'm playing in the street the way that uh, kids under six react to it they're just awestruck <laughs> it's like standing there staring <laughs> I well, they wonder how you do all those things at once. I I don't know. I imagine they're thinking, I want to do that. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, God. Oh, Corrupt them young. young. Get them young. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, young kids, that's the best. <laughs> when you get kids to react, that is the most awesome feeling in the world, believe me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you got a oh, record my. coming out? You have a record coming out, Ricky? Yeah, so I, I, made, I made a three songs. Uh, for it three years ago or two and a half years ago and I, then I got kind of I had to, to take a little hiatus to um, uh, get the rest of things in order here But uh, so then I over the last year I, I finished that and I've got ten songs and they're, it's not completely done yet and I still have to get it mastered so I'm kind of cramming to get this uh, knocked out before I uh, um, before I play at South by Southwest in, in, in March this year, so I have a few weeks left <laughs> uh, with no procrastination time left, which is definitely part of the part of it. I think it's important to um, procrastinate when you're doing art. <clears throat> <laughs> um, so yeah, the, so Wait the three for the songs I made a vinyl. To you, right? I I don't know. It's a sort of a, it's just sort of a, this. It's, I think whatever you do when you're making something, it comes out in it. So if you're uh, if you're reckless, that's going to become part of it. And and that's sort of a piece of what I like to do on a record. <laughs> <laughs> so I I leave myself no time to finish things properly, and a lot of times somehow or another, magically, it comes out okay. <laughs> So on your record, are you playing all the instruments? 
Yeah, it's all me, and what I typically do on the record is I do exactly what I do uh, live to create the basic tracks. I don't like uh, isolated rhythm tracks where somebody's got a drum beat and they put another piece on top of it, because I feel like the chemistry's all gone when you do that. So I play the play the drums and the guitar and the keyboard usually to get the basic feel. Um, and this these last set of uh, recordings, uh, I have had some help with some uh, from somebody that um, rents a lot of uh, very high end gear to more famous recording artists than myself in the area. Uh, and uh, he's let me use a whole lot of stuff that I guess most people wouldn't be able to get a hold of. So I've been using a lot of things that you would have found at Abbey Road or uh, uh, gear that that doesn't exist anymore and there's no possible way I could afford it because uh, sometimes we've got, well, I'm using $20,000 microphones and such. And because of that, the the, uh, the new record sounds quite a bit better than my older stuff. It makes it sound like a demo. Mm. So I like that. And, did um, you go to college? I no, I did not. I went you to a, a community high college school. for a couple of months and left. I went to high school. <laughs> I, I, I didn't I, make I, it I through left, high school. Uh, yeah, well, it's all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I quit 10th grade and I've been almost uh, 16, so, you know, school isn't really my thing. My daughter went to college, but uh, I'd rather be in the I, I decided I was going to be a musician when I was 17, so it didn't make a lot of sense for me to go to college at the time. Yeah. Unless you're studying music or, or you know, producing or... Yeah, I was, never that, I was never that kind of musician. I was I was an artist. Yeah, me too. It's just by by way of figuring it out as you go. Is there like any particular uh, instrument that is your favorite that you like playing, or do you just like to uh, just like to have them all at once? <laughs> yeah, the all at once thing is a. Mm-hmm. It's almost like an instrument. It's like one instrument. That's how. I, that's the only way I could do it. I'm not thinking about all those things at, at one time. It's like a, mm-hmm. it's just sort of one motion. I see. Uh, and I guess I enjoy that over just about anything. I, I also like playing um, uh, classical organ, the kind where you've got both uh, keyboards and both feet on the pedals. Yes, yes, I know what you're and talking I, about. Yeah, I, I, I studied that quite a bit when I was about 10. Oh, wow. Uh, when, I, when I was 10, I made my, my organ teacher... Go mm-hmm. through. Are you familiar with this piece called Dakota and Jig and D Minor by Bach? Yes, I it's do. Very yes. famous. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to play that when I was ten. <laughs> wow, that <laughs> so is phenomenal. We spent a year. Mm-hmm. We, we spent a year and we did it measure by measure. Oh wow! Jesse Pode is a piano teacher, by the way. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm a. Yes, so I'm a piano teacher. That was instructor. that was how that was really mm-hmm. how I got the most of my. Uh, my shots mm-hmm. was from that one, learning that one piece and taking all that mm-hmm. time to do it. Yeah, that's, the saying goes in the classical world, if you can play Bach, you can pretty much play anything. So I know exactly where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, everybody starts well, with Bach. Well, there's some Every- things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I cannot play lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's a little out, outside my range. <laughs> oh, please, Liz was the first, uh, he was the first rock star of his time. Um, about your travels, as like uh, some of the some of the other places you've traveled, if you've been around the world or around the U.S. or uh, anything like that. Yeah, mostly the uh, I haven't actually ever left the country, and some mm-hmm. someday I'd like to. Uh, all the places I've played have been on the coasts, mm-hmm. and uh, I have uh, just it hadn't ever really I, I was very very poor and had nobody backing me when i was young and i had a band but right now it's like in probably even around 1990 
mm-hmm. for 1995, uh, it was a real losing proposition to do that. You just, and we didn't, none of us had any money, so it was impossible. Mm-hmm. Right, I understand. Um, that. I, yeah, yeah, today, uh, I've done a couple of tours of the West Coast, and I go and play in Austin. Uh, there is something to this, uh, with, I don't know what it's like to travel with a couple of friends and do that, but uh, mm-hmm. driving around by myself, mm-hmm. uh, playing shows, gets to be a bummer after a while. Oh, <laughs> wow. So I, I, well, enjoy, I think I, when I, you're I doing really it with the band, I'm... they end up fighting with each other. <laughs> well, I guess it depends who it is. And, you know, I... I, I I think the road is is uh, it's easy to romanticize it, but I don't think it's much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was uh, on the road for a while with Doctor Hook. That was a lot of fun. I mean, you never got any sleep ever, ever, ever. We were on planes every every morning. That that thick notes on us because we were so out of it. We didn't know where we were by now, then. And the road manager well, yeah. here would put notes on us saying where we were going to go and stick us on a plane. And that happened like every day. So we never got any sleep. We didn't know where we were or what we were doing. They froze us on stage and, and we'd do it. But it was fun for a while. Yeah, but I wasn't sounds, on it that sounds, long. That sounds- Sounds normal to me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I'm sure if you did it for years and years and years, it'd get pretty, per, pretty much, and then you couldn't never have a relationship ever. Mm, wow. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to talk about that you've uh, that you really got into? Well, what I mostly pay attention to is popular music, even though I, I used to play mm-hmm. that stuff. And I I still enjoy listening to it, but I don't. It doesn't seem to be something I put on. So I, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I mostly uh, I enjoy uh, music from the '60s and the '70s before things fell apart. And I think also at that time that, that uh, there was no way of making a record uh, without already having the goods. Mm-hmm. So you, there was nobody, anybody, any, no way anybody was going to let you into a, a recording studio because it was too expensive back then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unless you already had something that was worth listening to. There wasn't as many things had been done at the time, so there was a lot of open space to create. Right. So I, when I hear the music from that period, it sounds much more real to me. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm still... I'm still listening to things from it that I haven't heard. Mm, that's awesome. That, uh, that, and I that, buy a lot of uh, I buy a lot of vinyl records today because the the sound of it is so much better than the computer. <laughs> that it's just a totally different experience. Yes, that I can see where you're coming from. Yes, the, the vinyl is a very different experience from the di- from the digitized versions of what we hear today. I have to agree there. Um, it's it's just got a more substantial feel to it rather than having uh, to download it. But you know, there's there's still something more to the to the vinyl because there's uh, that element of the past, that nostalgia that's there. And so I understand that concept. <laughs> yes. Well, I bought, so I just bought all the uh, like I'll buy a whole artist. Stuff on vinyl. I got. Um, oh. I just got uh, the Raspberries, mm. uh, Bad Finger, and all the Carpenters albums on vinyl. <laughs> oh God, she got all. You got all the good music. <laughs> guess, yes, you do. You do. You have good music there. Um, what are you doing uh, now? Uh, I'm probably going to play a couple of shows before I go to Austin, but the only show I'm really going to announce formally is when I go play over there, and I just sit up in Sixth Street. I I stopped uh, I stopped trying to uh, promote what I do mm-hmm. about a few years about two or three years ago, mm-hmm. maybe a little more than that. <clears throat> In 2008, I released something and it was promoted and it got on it. It, it got on college radio and it, it made like number 140 or something in the U.S. Awesome. And uh, you know, it fizzled away, and I think it sold about a thousand dollars worth of MP3s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't. Uh, I just do it because it's what I do now. So I just uh, and I don't really. I, I like it to be a surprise, and people don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And mo- and I don't like dealing with booking shows, or, or uh, it, which is basically uh, just 
how famous can you try to get? That's all it's all that that's all to that because that's what people go to see. And mm-hmm. I'm not interested in that anymore. <clears throat> I was probably twenty years ago, but so I'm just gonna go do the show in Sixth Street. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. And uh, I am working on this job for the next year or two, which is not music. And after I get finished with that, I believe that I'm going to be able to completely uh, just do music after that. So thank you for being on my very first show. And thank you, Gypsy Poet, for being on this show. Oh, hey. And it was great talking to you. And we'll find you up on YouTube or Facebook, that's Ricky Lee Robinson, one of the most amazing artists you'll ever come across in your whole life. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, George. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. It's been an awesome show. Guys, check it out on YouTube and and check Ricky Lee Robinson on Facebook and everywhere everywhere else you can find him, even on iTunes. And I hope that you enjoy the show. Thank you so much. I got to say adieu for now. And girl, George, my lady, you are sparkling, you are funny, and you are. And I'm so happy to have been part of your very first show. So I wish you the best in 2014, and may the fabulous girl George radio show take off. And check out uh, Gypsy uh, Poet still has her show going over on her site. So she'll be having some more shows pretty soon. So she's taking a couple weeks off to help me get mine going, and then she'll start her. So so watch and listen to both of them. So Mm -hmm. thank you for coming to the Girl George and the Dragons radio show and be part of my dragons. Tacky house against the sky Doesn't matter if I live or die By the engine drone Duct tape and Christmas lights Pulled down the shade that night I slept alone Feeling love, seen enough The boulevard is hard enough To keep on walking Understand when you keep on talking